Ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Okay, I call to order this Thursday, January 12th, 2023, meeting of the Moab City Planning Commission at 6.02 p.m. Um, first item of business on our agenda is citizens to be heard. Um, do we have anyone here for that agenda item? Citizens to be heard? I know why you're here. <laughs> why are you here? <laughs> okay, and we didn't receive any comments on anything on our agenda as far as I'm concerned um, or otherwise via email or other notice. So we will move on to the next portion of our meeting. Just as a note, um, we, we have some minutes from past meetings that we need to approve. They did not make it onto the agenda for this week but we'll make sure that's on for the next meeting and we can get those approved. Um, let's see, public hearing, uh, item 3.1, proposed planning resolution, number 01, 2023, a planning resolution conditionally approving the payment in lieu request for parking for the jailhouse cafe expansion level two site plan on property located at 101 North Main Street, Moab, Utah, 84532. This is a public hearing, a briefing on the item and a possible action. Um, on conditionally approving that payment in lieu request. Um, just as a quick note, in attendance tonight are Jeremy Lynch, Jill Tatton, myself, Kai Marienfeld, and Ruben Villapando Salas, um, as far as planning commissioners are concerned. We also have our city council representative, Luke Wojciechowski, in the audience. Um, okay, ready when you are, Corey. All right, so uh, it might flow best if we open the public hearing okay and then we can move through if anybody from the public does decide to come in uh, through the, any point of the presentation and we'll close the public hearing right before we're Great. ready to make actions okay perfect so we are going to go ahead and open the public hearing on item 3.1 now at 604 p.m. and we will leave that open until the close of the entire discussion just in case folks show up but as of right now um yeah is anyone here for the public hearing who would like to speak who is not the proponent of the item well i'm here ready to make a presentation to any member of the public who'd like to know what we're doing but i've already made that presentation to you guys okay so great <laughs> and the staff didn't receive uh email, phone calls, or other contact in regards to this public item. So no additional comments for the public hearing on that side. So what I'd like to do is just work our way through uh, the presentation for tonight's item, which will be very similar to the previous item, which was the parking exception. So there'll be a little bit of recap, but I think it'd be, there we go, perfect. Uh, important to have on the record that recap and then also the significance of what we're looking at tonight with the payment in lieu option. Uh, so within the parking code framework, again, jumping right into our presentation from the last time, is that the Jailhouse Cafe expansion has submitted a site plan application for uh, expansion and improvements on the current site. And then through that has... Uh, concluded what the parking calculation would be required to sufficiently meet the standards of that site plan application. And through that, we identified that it would need to have received the parking exception, which it did through planning resolution 10-2022, um, and then also maintain the existing building calculation credit, which leaves us at tonight's action, which would be a payment in lieu option following a public hearing, which would then have completed what would be the parking requirement uh, calculations, including the three, site, three parking spaces that will be on site to allow the site plan to move forward. So the site plan has essentially been stalled as we've worked our way through this process, allowing the applicants uh, to get some confirmation before they spend any more time developing that plan out. This slide is profiling excerpts from our municipal code within those parking sections uh, that are relevant to this approval. So again, uh, identifying what are the static parking requirements for the municip municip excuse me, municipal code, and then what the special exception requirements and criteria were, which we had reviewed uh, in our last item related to this 
approval. And then at the bottom, we see that replacement of existing buildings provision, which is that crediting effect. So that's not an action that the Planning Commission took. That is a built-in mechanism within the site plan code. And then what we're seeing here is this subsection B of that supplementary regulation section that identifies what the fee and lieu process includes. It is a discretionary action on the Planning Commission's part, uh, following that of a public hearing where comments from the public can be taken into consideration as well as staff recommendations and staff presentations. Tonight we don't have Chuck Williams from engineering here to uh, profile the downtown parking plans and on-street parking redevelopments, uh, but that was, I think, very well encapsulated in our last meeting. So if anybody watching is curious and coming into this a little bit later, I highly recommend going back to that October 13th, 2022 meeting to review that presentation to understand that a little more completely. But again, what we're looking at tonight is just this payment in lieu option. Now within that payment in lieu option, uh, which was a big part of our conversation during the last presentation, is the structure of how that was understood. So previously understood uh, design was a project would come in with a certain amount of supplied parking and then would request that parking exception, which is the process we went through this last time, for a data-based uh, deduction based on profiling of the business itself and how they're going to structure their hours of operation down to a number of employees, those types of mechanisms. And that criteria is in the municipal code. And then leaving the remainder of that open for payment uh, in lieu option. So as we can kind of see here, it's representing that would allow a project uh, a reasonable way to achieve that 100%. What the existing language actually actually says, because of some of the formulation, the way that that parking calculation is profiled, it creates a hole within that code. So there is, it's actually just a, an improper function, so to speak. Just the math doesn't always add up. So that a project could come in with a certain amount of supplied parking, they would create that data-based parking exception and then they would pay out that lieu for a maximum of 30% of the parking. But what that could do, depending on their amount of supply parking, is leave an unaccounted for amount of parking which would kill a project uh, before they've had the chance to really get going. What is being proposed now, and this is where uh, I think our participation with our city council representative was uh, a major part of understanding this, is that what we're looking at now is that 30% so the, the applicants are comfortable uh, within reason paying what is reasonable, what they can, which is that 30%, and then supplying what is f physically possible on site, but what left, which was our decision last time, that major parking exception of the 30 spaces. Um, where we anticipate this process going forward and maybe amending our code to allow it to function a little bit better so it's not such a major uh, discretionary action on the, count, or the Planning Commission's part to um, excuse parking that otherwise we really do need. And that's what the fee and lieu is going to allow us to do. The way that fee and lieu structure is designed is that that money has to go directly back into a uh, fund for parking transit or maintenance of vehicles. So it's going back into the public sphere for parking, which is the reason we're pulling that fund out. Um, so this restructuring would be to remove that 30% cap to allow the project to propose to the Planning Commission, well, this is what we physically can do. Here's what, by data standards, we really don't need. And then the rest, we are willing to pay out. But by maintaining that discretionary action on behalf of the Commission, that would provide the check in the balance if a project were to come in that maybe say did have the capacity to put in parking and they were just choosing not to. Instead they were putting in hotel rooms or um, expansive floor area, whatever it was, rather than putting in the parking they need, you could say, no, there's cl clearly room on site, you're choosing not to use it and then you could disallow that from moving forward. So 
this change, which is really, again, uh, the applicants have been super patient with us as if we've had to work through the code structure the way it is, um, but becoming the case study for how we ought to be moving forward because they've had to go through this process the way they have. Um, so again, going back to what we're looking at specifically here is overall what we uh, calculated was the 60 spaces, 30% were approved through the parking exception at that last October meeting. Um, 13 spaces credited through the existing floor area and then evaluating the 14 spaces for payment in lieu now, going back then to the site plan for the three space to be provided on site. This is a aspect of the presentation I'll probably go through a little bit quickly because it's just details out of the project itself, but uh, the Jailhouse Cafe, um, corner of 100 North and Main, a collection of technically three properties, but will be combined through this process into a single property uh, expanding. So the existing business is going to maintain, but expand. With that, it would be the inclusion of a two apartment, two apartment dwelling on the third floor, a tavern, also somewhat associated with the jailhouse, but separate on the second floor, and then eating establishment on the main with supplementing uh, commercial spaces on the basement floor. I'll leave, I think, an amount of the narrative to the applicants as they probably will be able to explain where they're coming from, why they're wanting to do that a little bit further. Um, we do have the floor plans presented in this. Um, they are quite small, so we can certainly zoom in if we have any questions, but what we're showing um, is the basement floor, first floor, second floor, third floor. Uh, the elevations for that site as it's going to develop. And then again, the background of the timeline and procedures that the applicants have been through so far, including the DRT process, site planning, and then planning commission actions. Uh, the proposed exception is kind of a blanket. Is, so there was a parking exception, but we've maintained some of that vernacular moving forward as including this fee and lieu. So this is a description of how we're structuring it, which is basically we've been over and over within those bubbles. So you're not missing any here, but wanted to write it out thoroughly so that it was in context for the presentation. And then tonight, what the motion would look like is very similar to that of our prior motion with the exception. The reason we've structured it this way is that the payment in lieu approval will essentially complete what is that parking exception umbrella, uh, allowing the site plan to move forward. But the parking exception that was approved at the October meeting, the parking payment lieu, which is a separate action tonight, approved uh, potentially tonight, would be contingent on the site plan approval. So there is one more approval step that will be required. But at that point, we're only evaluating the structure itself for meeting compliance standards. So it will no longer be a discretionary action, uh, especially in the case of parking, but we'll be just purely evaluating the code and does the project meet the code given these two approvals that we have. So this is the last discretionary action before this project moves forward, which yes, you will see again, but it will be in a different context of an administrative review of approval by the Planning Commission. Uh, that is as much as I was hoping to cover with the presentation. I can certainly unravel or unpiece any bit of that because we did move a little bit quick through some of uh, the background of the proposal, but I think we're all aware of kind of the structure that we're in now and then want to leave some time for the applicants to say as much as you want. I know last time it was a pretty expansive presentation, um, so uh, I'll yield my time to the applicants uh, to have their uh, contribution, and then maybe questions would be appropriate at that point. Well, um, and Will, if you to... would, sorry guys, yeah. because we are streaming, will you co both come up uh, to those mics, and then when you're talking, the first thing you say, just introduce who you are, which mic <laughs> is okay. who. I'm Will Petty, um, one of the partners in the Jailhouse Cafe. Um, 
We were here a while ago, and I think we made a pretty thorough presentation at that point. And um, I'm very happy to answer any questions that you have, but I don't want to rehash a whole bunch of stuff because you know we all we all have our time schedule. So um, if there are any, but I would like to add one more thing at the at the last meeting. Um, there were, uh, there were a couple of letters f from the public, and one of those letters was from Kara um, Dornwand, who, um, who I hadn't spoken to because she wasn't actually a neighbor next to the property. I kind of like neglected that. And I did actually, in the end, um, have a chance to go over and talk to her and Ray, and we, um, we hung out for a, about an, I don't know, I'm thinking probably it was about an hour. It was a very nice discussion. Um, and I think that's probably the reason they're not here tonight, because it clarified a lot of concerns that they had that I don't think turned out to be concerns in the end. Anyway, I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys might have. That's great. I mean, I think you did a very thorough presentation last time, so I won't, you know, use, use the time wisely tonight, so. I'm glad you talked to Car and Ray, though. It was great. I'm glad I did, too. It was nice. Did you bring the coloring book? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's stuck in my ranch in the snow. And now I, can't. <laughs> I have to walk six hours each way to get that out. <laughs> well, what's the, what's the, the current square footage of Jailhouse? Um, Gosh, Where are we up I'm really room? sorry. I do not know. But like um, a fourth of it. Um, like, like about a quarter, are you saying like about a quarter of the property? Well, you're going up to, to four stories, but that's basement included. I was just wondering what you guys Three stories. Do. Three stories? Yeah. Okay. There's a basement, but yeah, three stories well, three on ground. top and... Yeah. Yep. I mean... Uh, we... Really, I'm really sorry. I it should actually be in the packet, I think. Yeah. And I can try to pull I'm that just, up. I should have done my, my due diligence, but... I was just curious, just as far as future projects would go. Just so I'm, ge I'm guessing that, that since we got 13 spaces of credit, and we're now being required to provide 60 spaces, that it's probably four to five times as big as yeah. what we had up until. Um, unfortunately, my internet connection is out, but there is a parking calculation matrix in the packet. So with that hyperlink, you should be able to identify what the existing square footage is. Take a look. It's it's nothing super important. I'm just curious. Yeah. And I've been working on this project so long that um, I just forgot all that stuff. <laughs> That's way before. It doesn't matter now. <laughs> all right. Any other questions? from the commission to staff or to the applicants? Not for me. No. Not for me. No. Okay. I, uh, questions. I think we thorough. could probably close the public hearing if you're ready and then go into discussion and motions. Great. Um, all right. I will close the public hearing on agenda item 3.1 at 621 p.m. We are now moving into discussion and possible action. Thank you all. You can stay there or go sit down it's totally up to you if we do have any questions you might want to stay but um, before we get too far along, i'm gonna go check the front door again and for the public um, our auto lock system seems to have locked us out so uh, we had propped open the door so if the door was unpropped when you came hopefully you're still around so i'm gonna go check the door to see if there's anybody okay. else there really quick cool I really wanted to bring the coloring book. <laughs> <laughs> I only got that stuff out by rolling it up and putting it in a backpack. <laughs> I like it. Let's see. I'm finding on the matrix one space per 200 square feet, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Getting big. Just Corey going for a run. Anybody? <laughs> How's my time? Yeah, good. It's very good. Compare it the next time you go That's check the door. Right. Time next time. <laughs> All right. So, um, anything to add, Corey, as far as 
what we've just heard. I mean, it's it's we were I think very well prepped for this um, with the initial um, approval that we needed to do before considering this. I think with the whole discussion and the explanation, and honestly, that was a huge part of why it made sense. So yes. thank you for that great presentation. Sure. So. Um, I think the only additional component I'd like to add um, is that I think the again want to speak to the patience of the applicants as we've had to work through this because it has had to go through a series of uh, alterations on that path what we like to provide for the public is here is what the expectations are and it really should be a permitted way yeah. forward um, and my hope in that is that this action and the way that we're moving th forward uh, regardless of approval or denial is uh, an example of how we need to amend our code. So this is, for me, uh, a city initiative action as well as an individual project action to profile how we need to fix some of these things. Yeah. So that's really, really only additional add is um, how this will hopefully supplement adjusting our code going forward. Great. Well, with that, if we don't have any other questions, we have some options. If you go to the agenda summary for this item, we can conditionally approve this planning resolution with or without modifications. We can continue or table the action to a later meeting uh, with specific direction to city staff and applicant. Um, or we can deny the parking payment in lieu request, um, giving specific findings for that decision. And there is a recommended motion. It is quite long. <laughs> I do believe you need to make the full one. So if you feel like talking a lot, go for it. <laughs> no one feels like talking. What's the, what's the proper way to address each sub-condition? Um, sub-condition A? Sub I think we'll have to have it read. In, in, in this read scenario, it. it's... Um, as complex it is, I think it'd be really great to have it re on the record. So we just say one A. Oh, I see what you're saying. I, yeah. You don't need to say like section, subsection, yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. Bloody bloody. Legalese. I move that the City of Moab Planning Commission conditionally approve planning resolution 01 2023, a planning resolution conditionally approving the payment in lieu request for parking for the Jailhouse Cafe expansion level two site plan on property located at 101 North Main Street, Moab, Utah, 84532 with the following condition. One, all outstanding comments shall be addressed to the satisfaction of the Moab City Engineer and Planning Director prior to the building permit application approval, including A, the Planning Commission approve payment in lieu for 14 spaces, given that I, of the total 60 spaces required, three spaces shall be provided in the proposed development, 13 spaces shall be credited due to existing commercial floor area and 30 spaces approved for exception by planning resolution 10 2022 and two that the applicant submit payment for the maximum available parking payment in lieu at 30 percent of the proposed required parking spaces totaling 14 spaces and one the parking exception and parking payment in lieu approvals shall only be applied upon approval of the proposed level two site plan application 22 0016 for the jailhouse at cafe expansion and two the land use authority denial of the site plan application shall terminate the parking exception granted by planning resolution 10 2022 and parking payment in lieu granted by this planning resolution 01 2023 period well done that i'll was second long one. that <laughs> all right we have a motion we have a second nice job ruben uh any discussion well, it, this probably doesn't pertain to this. I mean, this this project's a big part of it, but I guess 2023 is a big year for parking in Moab, and at least conversations and fixing code for that. So I guess we'll see that in future agenda. If you guys would like it to be, I think it will be. <laughs> uh, I know the city council is coming up on their strategic planning meetings, and a component of that was a menu of planning options that they could choose to identify something they want to tackle. Uh, this could be one of them or one of a series. Um, but yeah, I think the planning commission has some ability to say, hey, we really want to make this initiative happen. So as much as the council or the planning commission would like to, we can, we can advance how you see fit. Great. Um, any other discussion? 
Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Uh, we are ready for a vote whenever you are. We'll do a roll call. I don't know if we have to roll call anymore. We don't uh, anymore, Because we're not okay. Zooming, so. Oh. oh, you're right, we're not. I think following city council's procedures, I think a okay. audible would be just okay, fine. Okay, great. All in favor uh, of the motion, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Motion passes for zero unanimously. All right, congratulations. Thanks very much, guys. Carry yeah. on. So, and you're gonna see us again soon for that site plan. On okay. to the next part of the slog. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, our next item is an action item, planning commission meeting schedule for 2023, a review and possible action on that. So everyone has the meeting schedule in front of them. I, I think you will find there are no surprises. <laughs> we are going to continue our normal meeting schedule of the second and third Thursdays of every month. Um, and then there are some potential joint meetings with the city council that are listed there as well, which I think are, are the important dates. I think normally we'd have, you know, quite, quite a little bit of notice if we're doing that, but that's just sort of to have this in front of you, make sure you know that if you're scheduling a family trip and you could do it January 24th instead of January 25th, pick the 24th, because the 25th might be a joint city council meeting. So basically, yeah. We had those highlighted. I had worked with Summer, our city recorder on this, is that it seems that every time we've scheduled for these joint meetings, they've deviated. But uh, so we had a version of this with no dates but uh, I thought it might be more appropriate to at least give you some ballpark of what we'll be aiming for. Um, but I think most cases it would be that we don't have a meeting versus adjusting that time. Yeah. So if you can count on it, it may not happen. It's easier to kind of say, oh, I've got some free time versus, oh, we're having to move you around. Yeah. So that, that is a plan. So Great. appreciate your flexibility with that. Yeah, that makes sense. And that is also good for the members of the public to know. If anyone's listening or watching, we have this. It's in our packet. You also can take those dates and write them down if you want to be a regular watcher of the Moab City Planning Commission meetings. Here's your TV schedule. Um, I, I think it's great that we're going to, we haven't had a joint meeting in a long time, pre-COVID, I think. Mm -hmm. So that would be great. It's fun trying to fit all of us at the dais. <laughs> okay, um, and what is our action? It's oh, an action item. Right, we did supply that. It, uh, I think, would be just to approve the schedule. Okay. Uh, the 2023 proposed schedule for the Planning Commission would be the appropriate action. Great. A motion to approve it? Great. We have a motion? I'll second. Second by Jeremy. Motion by Ruben, second by Jeremy. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion passes. That is our schedule for the year. Perfect. Great. <laughs> okay, future agenda items. We, uh, as, and I do want to apologize to both the commission and then anybody in the public uh, that has been trying to reach out to our offices, both of our planners. Uh, we're out basically for the whole month of December, both on uh, emergency medical leave so we didn't mean to leave anybody hanging we actually had a I think a pretty good plan for how to have accommodated what we thought were some of the expectations but um, life took a different path for both of us so we are both back in the office now and I think as I've been saying to some of our um, project teams is that Anna and I right now are trying to kind of rekindle that engine fire that we had going on approving everything so I know a lot of folks have been reaching out to us um, but when those emails are coming in and we're so buried, it might just take a little while for us to get back to you. Um, and then certainly, if you've emailed us once, we're gonna hopefully try to get back to you really quick, but it wouldn't hurt to email, call, or even come in. We will you know, we will take you in whatever order we can get, and if you're really interested, do make an extra effort to reach out to us. Um, so that being said, we do have a number of DRT projects that are getting very close. Um, it's not necessarily for the planning commission, but the um, Abbey subdivision phase one final plat is preparing uh, upcoming for city council approval. So I know that's something the planning commission was heavily involved in for almost four years now. Uh, so for that phase one to actually get its final approval is um, kind of a big step. So 
Uh, in the planning commission realm, we have a few multi-household projects that are getting close. Um, Anna, anything else off the top of your head that you think might be getting really close for us? And so for the, sorry, Anna doesn't have her microphone. So for the YouTubers, um, Anna was mentioning that we do have the Aggie Phase 3 rezone, which will be coming on the 26th of January for the Planning Commission with a public hearing. This Phase 3 is really, uh, and again, it is pretty confusing with how many things are going on over there, but an expansion to the Phase 1 apartments that they have. So it'll be more apartments. Uh, going in next to it, kind of in between where the current site is and where the campus is. So they're, f they're filling in as they're moving forward there. Um, so that first step would be a rezone, but then they'll also be coming through with a site plan following that. Um, and then Anne's, Anna also mentioned some of the initiatives that were left over. We had scheduled some public hearings um, and some meetings with Planning Commission City Council to bo get both the uh, outdoor lighting ordinance update or our dark sky lighting ordinance amended so that was in the works as well as our water efficient landscaping ordinance coming before both planning commission and council for a kind of final draft review at this point so it's something that i think this commission has spent quite a bit of time with alexi our new sustainability director to refine so we're now actually into the stages of having a an ordinance for you to really dig your teeth into um and I think that's really all that's super uh, eminent. That's kind of on the horizon for us. All right, I think that's it. Great, thanks. Welcome back, you both. Very happy to be back. <laughs> okay, that was short and sweet. I will close this meeting at 6.35 p.m. Thanks, everyone. Happy New Year. Thanks, everyone. Year. Thanks for being here. Kicking it off great. Woohoo. Woohoo. That was fast. <laughs> well, go home and keep writing a brief. <laughs> <laughs>